feel so good to just relax and do nothing again. I can't remember the last time I actually did nothing. Let's watch some TV. Ah, Netflix! Can never do no wrong. Let's see. Oh, Big Mouth! Never heard of this before. It's got some pretty high reviews. Let's see what it's like. What the f was that? Ah, Netflix. Where would we be without it? Thanks to Netflix, there has been a wash of easy to access television and entertainment. Netflix alone has two of my favourite TV shows to watch right now. But gradually they're making a decline into the desperate and the depraved, and this is where Big Mouth starts to show its ugly face. My god, just when I thought that we were living in the golden age of animation for adult audiences, this show comes out of nowhere to take that credibility back and make you forget that cartoons, if not handled with the right amount of attention to details and actual thought, will come across as bland, unoriginal and unfunny as what The Simpsons is turning into right now. Sorry, what The Simpsons is right now. The show has four creators to its name and is co-written with a writer from Family Guy. Warning bells went off as soon as I saw this. Regardless of who they are and why they're involved, all I literally got from this nightmare in front of my eyes was a show that wasn't funny, unpleasant, juvenile and just downright wrong. With that said, here is my reasons why Big Mouth is the worst show on Netflix. Number 1. The story has nothing to interest us. The main focus of any animated sitcom is a hook or a thread that we can have as an audience to get intrigued by and follow the characters for the remainder of the season. This isn't a necessary element to some animated shows, but to the ones that generate a large following, i.e. Rick and Morty and Death is for Family, they at least have a structure and a thread to allow the audience to be engaged with the show and to see what happens next. Big Mouth, on the other hand, well uses the same tired and worn out cliché about growing up for the sake of its own show and doesn't change throughout the entirety of its 10 episode, my god it felt longer, structure. Its main joke and plot is, huh, puberty is weird, huh? And that's pretty much all they go on. Most coming of age stories balance out puberty in a way where it's only touched upon because the mental change of puberty is more in depth of a way of looking at change in grown adults over rather than, say, the amount of erections and pubes they find when they wake up in the morning. Genuine jokes on Big Mouth, more about that later. They mainly say that when puberty hits boys, they become little obsessed sex perverts and girls become emotional wrecks. Unfortunately, there could have been good potential to elaborate on some of those cliches in a sex ed classroom scene in episode 1. But at last, they end up going straight back to where they started with an unfunny, flogging a dead horse script. God, I feel bad for that horse right now. And I also have to point out, people have said, but the girl's anger of puberty is done really well. And it is, but this show isn't about the girl's point of view. We follow three unlikable boys as they go through their same derogynous lives, you know, questioning their sexuality, watching too much porn, and so on, and so on, and so on. Number two, the characters aren't that memorable. In any good cartoon, you are given characters that you can relate to and follow the story of the show. However, since this show has no story, the characters suffer because of this. The characters in the show range from unfunny 13 year old kids and not memorable parents. The characters act way above their age in certain episodes until the end when the writers remember, oh shit, they're meant to be 13 and try to win us back in a forced sentimental moment that makes us think we're supposed to care for the characters in some way. The main problem with the characters in this is that they don't have an arc. This is what comes from not having a story in a show. If you don't go on a journey with these characters, then you don't really get emotionally invested when something bad happens to them or anything with any sentimentality. Let's take a look, for example, my favorite TV show of all time, which is also a cartoon on Netflix. In Bojack Horseman, we are invested heavily with the character of Bojack. We see his gradually progression from someone who is self-loathing and feeling worthless to finding hope and realizing that it's never too late to be a better person. The same can be said for another animated show on Netflix. In F is for Family, Frank Murphy is a man of his time, and he is having a hard time following the changes of his time, but his growth into change and into this makes his character more interesting and has our attention. These qualities are so integral to any piece of storytelling. All we get from Big Mouth is one character hasn't quite hit puberty yet, his friend has hit it fucking hard, his female friend is losing her mind because of it, and their gym teacher is the most simplest man on the planet. There are characters that we are supposed to relate to and follow, but because they don't really learn or have any personal development growth, our interest in them doesn't happen. Number 3. The show's reality makes no sense. Now since this is a cartoon, you can literally do anything you want to the story as long as it fits into the reality of the situation. Someone should really tell that to the writers of Big Mouth. Again, this is a cartoon and you're allowed to bend reality as it will, but there are times when situations pop with characters that don't fit the normal reality and are just there for the sake of having more bad jokes. I'm getting there. And adding pretty much nothing to a nothing situation. 
Our main character can talk to the ghost of Duke Ellington, we learned that from the first episode. However, so can his friend Andrew, although he's already got his conscious character in the form of the hormone monster, whose one main gag is that he is the walking embodiment of perversion of a 13 year old boy. There's a female version of that one as well, but she's actually more than just making sex jokes, which is a shock that the show actually managed to change something in a character. But you would assume that nearly all teenage boys would see this, this monster too, they would all see the hormone monster. Nope. Just this one character, and an unusual cameo from Joe Walsh from the Eagles as well. Fuck this show. And fuck the Eagles too. Then there are two heavy ones. Now brace yourself, because what I'm about to say actually happened in the show. I wish I was making this up, but that would imply that I would think the same as Big Mouth. In one episode, our 13 year old female character has a moment where she talks to her vagina. I repeat, she talks to her vagina. The vagina has the voice of Kirsten Wig, which I'll be fair, I think she's good at what she does. How she landed the role of a 13 year old girl's vagina, I'll never know. Then there's the character who often has sex with his pillow. The previous episode shows us how to make a sex pillow for ourselves, thanks Big Mouth, who miraculously is now alive and pregnant with its child. It was at this point where I was slamming my head against the table, screaming at the top of my lungs, what the fuck is wrong with this show? But that's sadly only the tip of the iceberg. Problem number four, these jokes aren't funny. Okay, I know humor is subjective and all this sort of stuff, but bear with me when I say that this, this show just isn't funny and the jokes aren't funny. Going into the first episode of the show, I didn't know what to expect. Then at the end of it, like, like I thought there would be something funny for me to comment on, but it's just fucking terrible. They will often hang on a joke for a large majority of the episode only to have the same punchline repeated over and over again in different parts of the show. You can tell that this show was written from someone from Family Guy, because unfortunately, the show follows the same basic formula as it does with any Family Guy. It's a set up situation, say something shocking hoping it gets a laugh, take it back to the situation of the joke, try and round it up with, with a punchline, and then throw in something random to make it all seem like it was planned all along. Big Mouth has the exact same formula as Family Guy, but it already feels like Family Guy now than what it was when it started. Then of course, what would a show be if it didn't have at least 5 or 6 musical numbers sprinkled throughout it? These songs achieve the impossible, in which they have a musical number that doesn't move the story along or anything like that. They just have a song for the sake of having a song in the plot. It ranges from a giant singing tampon, singing how everybody bleeds in the style of R.E.M's Everybody Hurts with the face of Michael Stipe on the tampon. I really wish I was making that up. They also sing at a bar mitzvah in which they sing how life is a fucked up mess, which perfectly sums up the show as a fucked up mess. But perhaps the one joke song that morally offended me down to my core was in the episode in which Andrew thinks he's gay and is confronted by the ghosts of dead gay celebrities. One of them being Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury pretty much was the greatest singer in rock music, as well as a natural born entertainer and a gifted songwriter. His legacy is pissed on in this episode of Big Mouth in which he celebrates being gay. Freddie Mercury never made a big deal about his sexuality. He cared more about his passion and his music rather than the fact that he was gay because he knew it wasn't important to the music. That, that was it. That one scene made me hate this show. Problem number five, there's no heart. I think this is a no-brainer to talk about here, but the show is literally hollow. There is no driving force or emotion or substance to it at all. All it is, is is a bunch of dirty, crass, vulgar jokes after another. You don't really feel anything from it other than embarrassment. Even when the tender moments happen in the show, you don't feel anything for them. All you get is moments in the show when it feels like it's having your heart, only for it to show the follow-up of it immediately with a terrible and ill-placed joke. Heart and comedy, especially for me, is vitally important. But surprise, surprise, if the show can't even handle basic structure or story or even basic comedy for, for its subject matter, how the hell is it going to handle heart and trying to be sentimental? Long story short, it doesn't. Big Mouth is a failed attempt at something that wasn't needed. This show is so bad in fact that Nick Kroll, one of the show's creators and voice actors of the show, admitted to the guys of the comedy Bang Bang that as soon as he saw the giant singing tampon, he knew that this show was going to suck. And sad to say, he actually hit the nail on the head on that one. It doesn't hold up to anything memorable and its painful attempts at humour only shows that this is in its execution. It's stupid, it's tasteless, it's immature, it's just an awful, awful show. My advice, if you want to watch something with the juvenile humour of people who think it's funny to shock their friends in order to be funny, just call up a bunch of high school students and play a game of Cards Against Humanity. You'll get your money's worth, and most of all, compared to Big Mouth, it's the same fucking show. If you did watch Big Mouth and enjoy it, shame on you. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Avoid the show and watch something good. Life is too short for bad TV. Whew, fuck me.
God forbid that any of anything is worse as Big Mouth ever again. Thankfully, we'll never see that show for a long, long time. <laughs> What's it, like, 